Let's turn now to the race for the Democratic nomination for president. Tomorrow night, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders will face off in a debate in Flint, Michigan, a city thrust into the national spotlight uh, after re revelations over contamination and high levels of lead in its drinking water surfaced several months ago. Now, today, both candidates are battling for the votes of organized labor, addressing rallies in Michigan ahead of Tuesday's primary here in this state. A new poll shows Clinton leading in Michigan with 61 percent of the vote, followed by Sanders at 33 percent. And joining me now to discuss are Jason Johnson, politics editor at TheRoot.com and professor of political science at Hiram College, and Mildred Gaddis, host of The Mildred Gaddis Show on Radio 1 in Detroit, my, firm, my uh, fellow former Radio 1 mate, because we used to be in the same radio family. So Absolutely. it's great to finally it's meet you in to person. Be with you. And, so, and I'll start with you ladies first, Jason, you'll understand. Course, yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about, <laughs> about the black vote here in Michigan. This is a state that's sort of tailor-made for Bernie Sanders in a lot of ways. Obviously, what happened in Detroit, what happened uh, to the auto industry, what happened in Flint in terms of the economy, even before the water crisis, he can make that economic argument here probably better than anywhere else. Why is Hillary Clinton up 61 to 33 over that candidate, over, over Bernie Sanders in Michigan. You're what? absolutely right uh, when you talk about the characteristics of a Bernie Sanders and, and how Michiganians will feel about that kind of candidate. I think realistically, a lot of Michiganians have decided uh, that he can't win in November. However, I've talked with people who are telling me that they're going to vote for Bernie Sanders Tuesday and vote for Hillary Clinton in November. Now, why do they say they're going to do that? They like him. Mm -hmm. They like him. They believe that um, as the economy has done it, dance and how corporate America has rebounded, the average American is not doing well. People are still underwater with their mortgages, and Bernie Sanders speaks to that kind of, of, of American. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about the specifics that the candidates uh, have discussed Flint in their own right. We know Hillary Clinton has a, a good relationship with the mayor of Flint, a qu quite close relationship. When we were down there, she was calling her, like, you know, they're on the phone. She tweeted this today, Hillary Clinton did, Flint families have waited long enough for the help they need, no more excuses, the Senate should pass the bipartisan bill before uh, aid before it, meaning money, you know, to try to start uh, redressing some of the, the pipe issues. Hillary Clinton's relationship with the African American community in this state. Was it pre-existing? Did she establish it after the water crisis? Where did this come from? You know, I, I think it's 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 long-term work. It starts with like the Congressional Black Caucus. It starts with her having a lot of different kinds of surrogates in the state. But I also think this: a lot of people I talk to, I, I have some family here. The people who I talk to, they consistently say, "I love what Bernie has to say. I just don't think he'll be able to do it." That, that's that's what it really boils down to. And so I think Clinton has been able to sort of project this image that, yeah, you may not like me, you may not trust me, you remember some of the things I said about Obama in 2008. But but I'm going to get things done. And that, I think, has really, really helped her, even with some cynical voters here. Well, I mean, but you may not like me vote. I mean, that, that, that's a lot. That's, right? that's pretty pejorative. And the, the thing that I've also found is that there are black voters that like Hillary Clinton, oh, right? Course, and that they course. like her in part because she got that blessing from the Obama administration, because they wrapped up that nasty 2008 campaign, and then she went and worked for him. Does the Obama connection help her to do more than just be acceptable, but to actually be favored by black voters Well, in, in Michigan, keep in mind that there are black Americans who will love the Clintons forever, despite that this is another Clinton. Uh, but there are people in this state who are upset about the game that the high-level Democrats played the first time. Uh, NAFTA. Exactly. Uh, well, no, no, no. Uh, they ch they tried to change. Uh, former Governor Jennifer Granholm and okay. some other higher-ups <laughs> in the Democratic Party mm -hmm. played a little nasty game Ooh, in an tell. effort to mm -hmm. to deliver Michigan to Hillary Clinton. Okay. But it did not. they did not succeed, and Obama won Michigan. Michigan anyway. So a lot of uh, black Americans are still upset about that. However, You're talking about trying to game and move Michigan earlier in 2008. So they'd vote earlier, hoping she would win. She won. Then they tried to get those delegates seated. That's what you're talking about in absolutely. 2008. Absolutely. Okay. And, and Obama... Uh, took the state. Took the state. So um, I think that right now, and it's amazing, Hillary Clinton still has this high unfavorability rating, but yet the polls are showing her uh, she's still ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, they, Bernie Sanders, speak to. Uh, the core of the average American. Now, with this ultra-conservative Congress, no matter who wins, we know that even uh, uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, greatest dreams about what he would like to see happen in this country for all Americans is just not going to happen. Yeah. And so uh, they believe that Hillary Clinton will win in November. And they believe she's going to win, and she'll get there bruised and battered a little bit, but she'll get there. So they, it's basically just an inevitability argument is working for her. So let's talk a little bit about the argument that Bernie Sanders could make here. Right. Um, in a city like Flint, 
um, which has a 57% black population, 37% white, 4% Hispanic, mixed, and 4% other. So Flint is obviously a very black city. Detroit's obviously a very black city. But these are the places where the auto industry died, where NAFTA, which is the thing Bill Clinton did, right. hurt their families. It, it, it is interesting to me that Bernie Sanders wouldn't have a, a stronger play for the black vote specifically in a state like Michigan. Well, but I, I think he does. I think he has an argument. He's not going to get blown out as badly as perhaps in South Carolina. Right. But again, I think it has a lot to do with history. People want to see that you can actually get something done. And the thing about Sanders is what I think he's had trouble selling is he's had trouble selling his legislative accomplice. He's had trouble saying, I brought this to Vermont. I did that to Vermont. And that's where people come into question. Like, gosh, I really like what you have to say. Clinton can say, look, yes, we did NAFTA, but we also have the 90s economy. Yes, I said super predators, but I've also been talking about this in New York. It, she, she has different ways to kind of balance out the holes in her policies, and Sanders hasn't been able to make that case as strong yet. So the, both of the candidates, obviously, are here tomorrow night. What are you listening for? What do you want to hear these candidates say to, on that debate tomorrow Well, you know, I, I've been listening to the, the Hillary Clinton uh, radio commercials. A because bit, you're on the radio, so you probably hear yeah, it. Yeah, sleep yeah, at this point. yes. And she's, she's really attacked the, the white privilege in America as it relates to the Flint crisis. When she talks about the richer suburban communities, the fact that the day after it was, it, it was the, the, the problem was diagnosed, it, there would have been a remedy the next morning. And she's gone after the Gross Points and the Bloomfield Hills quite aggressively, to my surprise. Uh, it gets to a point where some of that begins to sound like pandering. So I think that tomorrow people are going to be looking for specifics. What are the specifics? And we have not heard a lot about specifics. Yeah. If you polled your listeners, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, where would they be? Where are they about now? <laughs> You're getting the calls. Tell me what Listen, we're hearing on the radio. My, my listeners are, say, uh, are loving Bernie Sanders, but however, they're saying realistically they're going to hold their noses and vote for Hillary Clinton in, in November. Is that what your yeah, family yeah. saying? That's, that's what I'm always hearing. I, whether, whether it's here in Michigan, whether it's my people back in Ohio, that's what people are saying. They're like, look, we are, and, and I'll also say this just to be perfectly candid, because he's making a play for the yep. state as well. They're like, we only think Hillary can beat Trump. And that's the other thing I'm hearing. It's an people, X factor. Yeah, people it's are an important afraid. X factor. Thank you, Jason Johnson, Mildred Gaddis. It's nice great to finally see you in you. person. Thank you very much. Okay, and still to come, we are standing by.